guys, welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the new 2022 Toyota 4Runner, courtesy of Younger Toyota in Hagerstown, Maryland. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so, I'm in this one today because there's actually some big changes for the 2022 4Runner. Of course, I'll be going over them for you guys in this video. Of course, you have the unmatched reliability of this beast. Just look at a Consumer Reports magazine for that. And one of the cool things actually about getting this one from Younger Toyota is the fact that they're not charging over MSRP right now in these crazy automotive times that we're living in, unlike most other dealerships out there. But anyways, had to mention it. But anyways, in this video, I will be testing out and going over everything about the 4Runner from acceleration, braking, steering wheel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, Let's start with pricing. And so there will be several different trim levels for the 2022 4Runner. First one being the SR5, starting at $37,305. TRD Sport, which is a new trim level for the 2022 4Runner at least. They previously, for example, have put it on the Tacoma, I know, but new for the 4Runner, so that's pretty exciting, starting at $40,150. Trail Special Edition for $39,275. SR5 Premium for $40,715. TRD Off-Road, $41. 135 TRD offered premium for $44,080 limited for $46,890 and that's actually the trim level that we are in today and lastly the TRD Pro starting at $52,000 $120. So by the way, that was all pricing for the rear wheel drive configuration with the exception of those TRD trims. If you wanted to add four wheel drive for any of those other trims, simply add $2,000 then to any of those prices. But regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on the 4Runner is going to be the same. Powering this beast is a four liter naturally aspirated V6, putting out 270 horsepower at 5,600 RPM, 278 pound feet of torque coming in at 4,400 RPM, power center to rear wheels or all wheels through a five-speed automatic zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 7.7 seconds with MPG numbers coming in at 16 in the city 19 on the highway regardless of if you go with the rear wheel drive or four-wheel drive actually taking regular unleaded fuel but so now having got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and put that acceleration here to the test I'm gonna find it straight away here and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2022 Toyota 4Runner here up to speed all right just pulling out onto the highway that's it You could tell this thing is a beast. Not the quickest thing in the world, obviously, for the size of this vehicle, but it's not really what this vehicle is known for anyway. So plenty of an acceleration to verge you onto the highway, but this thing's a beast. I'm just gonna say that. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So as expected, you will, of course, find four-wheel ventilated disc brakes. As far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, it comes in at 127 feet. As far as braking feel goes, that is actually perfectly fine. I've had no issues with that. It definitely feels fine, especially for the size of this SUV. It brings you to a stop without any issues there. Touching on suspension and handling, up front, you're gonna get an independent double wishbone type front suspension. In the back, four link with lap lateral rod rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars, and there's a couple different configurations actually you can go with when you're touching on the suspension. Let me first mention the x ray a Sport Enhancement Suspension. That's gonna come on the TRD Sport and the Limited that we have today, and that essentially is going to be the one I would personally go with, and here's the reason why. It's kind of like an adaptive damping suspension, so it monitors each shock absorber individually. It not only tightens up the suspension during heavy cornering, but it's also gonna kind of monitor the road imperfections, giving you a smoother ride as well, so best of both worlds. That's why I like that particular suspension, but there's other suspension setups though that are available for the 4Runner for different needs. Take for example, there's the kinetic dynamic suspension system that's going to be optional for the off-road trims and that's probably going to be your best off-road configuration. So if you were planning on off-roading a 4Runner, that's going to be the option that you want to go with for that. There's also going to be Fox high performance shocks that are going to come standard on the TRD Pro. It's going to be a Torsen limited slip center differential if you were to go with the limited locking rear differential if you were to go with that TRD Pro or any of the TRD trims actually. And of course, again, with that TRD Pro, you're gonna get TRD tuned front springs then 
as well. But overall, as far as ride quality goes in our limited that we have today, as we are cruising down these back roads with all this fall foliage, looks pretty darn good, but it's been perfectly fine. So some people may think the 4Runner would ride like a truck, but I'm, I'm telling you guys, if you get the x Rea sport suspension, it does and It's such a smooth ride, quite honestly, in this particular configuration of the 4Runner that we have today. I'll say that. As far as steering feel goes, it definitely leans on the heavier side of things, which I personally always prefer. So it gives the driver a little better feeling of being in control. So better driver feedback, I guess you could say. That's why I personally like it. As far as cabin noise goes, you guys could probably tell in my short drive here, there's a whole lot of exterior wind noise coming into the cabin, which again, I definitely like. And touching on visibility, it's a larger SUV, but having said that, because of the shape of it, because it's so kind of straight in the back, visibility is actually 100% on point for that particular reason. So definitely a fan of that as well. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 Toyota 4Runner. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2022 Toyota 4Runner finished in army green. Definitely a very nice looking color to this particular 4Runner, I gotta say. But anyways, let's go ahead and start up front. Full LED headlights now come standard for all trim levels across the board. And so last year, Toyota introduced LED headlights coming standard for all trim levels, but now full LED headlights are gonna come standard for all trims, meaning both low beam and high beam. So that's definitely a big plus for the 2022 model year. When it comes to that front grill, you will get a unique Toyota front grill for the TRD Pro. You're gonna get some added chrome accents if you were to go with the limited like we have today. There is actually a front skid plate covering the engine and front suspension for all trim levels across the board. You will find a TRD hood scoop with the TRD Sport. That's gonna look pretty cool. And like I said, full LED headlights do come standard on all trims. You also get the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, those headlights will turn on automatically for you there. Automatic high beams also coming standard for all trim levels. LED fog lights, once again, coming standard for all trim levels across the board. You guys can see that. So overall, definitely a very nice looking front end. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the side of the 4Runner. All right, so now since we are around to this side, you guys can see roof rails coming standard for all trim levels across the board. Yakima cargo basket for the Trail Special Edition. TRD roof rack for the TRD Pro. Rear privacy glass, of course, coming standard for all trim levels across the board. And you do get some trim level badging found on that C pillar towards the back. I think you guys can see our limited badging that we have since we do have the limited trim level, of course. Body colored power adjustable side mirrors coming standard. They will be heated with LED the integrated turret signals if you go with the SR5 premium trim level and up. At least that's how you get the LED turn signals. Running boards are going to be optional for all trims. And again, we do have those with chrome accents as well. Makes sense to tie in together with all the other chrome accents on our limited. And then when it comes to the wheel configuration, you will find 20 inch alloy wheels for all trim levels, but the limited and TRD Sport. It's gonna be a slightly different configuration there. But anyways, that pretty much rounds out the side of this one. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so now swinging around back, you guys, can see a little better angle of that army green color that looks so dang good. Starting up top, you will find a body colored shark fin antenna just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light. Just below that, there actually is a rear window wiper. And let me get up a little bit closer here to show it to you guys because it's actually tucked away underneath of that rear spoiler. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to focus in on it, but there it is, it is under there, I told you. But anyways, the reason they do that is because that rear glass does open and close. So that is one of the coolest things about the 4Runner and that button's gonna be located right around the shifter, but I'm showing that to you guys right now because it's just one of the coolest things. How many SUVs have their rear window that can open and close like that? There's not many, so. I do love that. LED tail lights, of course, coming standard across the board to tie in together with the LED headlights. And just below it all, there is a single exhaust outlet kind of integrated a little bit into that rear bumper on the passenger side. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip.
opposite of making our way to that rear lift gate, when it comes to actually opening it up, it actually is a manual lift gate for all trim levels across the board. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at nine cubic feet with the optional three row configuration. And yes, it's true. You can get the four runner in either a two row configuration or a three row. We actually do have that optional third row configuration today. So I'm able to show that to you guys. That's what nine cubic feet looks like. With that third row folded down, that bumps up to 47.2 cubic feet. And with all rows folded, that is going to come in at 89.7 cubic feet, which is pretty darn impressive. That's more than the Highlander. It's more than the Palisade. It's more than the Pilot. It's more than the Telluride. It's more than just about all other three row SUVs out there. So definitely a good bit of space there. Did want to mention you will get in-floor storage only if you go with the Trail Special Edition. Also in that cargo area, you will find a 12 volt power outlet. In addition to that, 120 volt power outlet, which you definitely don't always get in other SUVs out there. So I liked seeing that. Also grocery bag hooks there are tie down anchors as well and there is a cargo cover that is going to be available if you wanted to go that route but now let's go ahead and make our way to the third row legroom which comes in at 29.3 inches so not a ton of space back there but should be enough to fit a small child i will say that of course that third row does get some cup holders and a little bit of cargo storage actually just below those couplers as well which is pretty nice then making our way to the second row legroom that is going to come in at 32.9 inches for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i had back there you will find rear ventilation for those rear passengers and there are dual usb charging ports then for the rear passengers as well but then make your way to the front seats you will find an eight-way power driver seat with power lumbar with a cloth finish that's going to be the standard configuration but there is a soft tax upholstery coming with the sr5 premium trd pro trd offered premium and TRD Sport and that configuration comes with heated front seats and a power adjustable passenger seat then as well and lastly if you were to go with the limited like we have today you're going to find a perforated leather so that of course allowing for these front seats to be not only heated but then ventilated as well so i do like that we have that here today but anyways also love the color of these interior seats and by the way seating was plenty comfortable so definitely a big fan of the seating but now let's take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wrapped for all trim levels across the board as well so definitely had no problems with that now let's make our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key here you do have your toyota logo on the one side then when you flip it over lock and unlock so pretty basic key so the plus side to that is if you were to happen to lose it for whatever reason like i like to do at ocean city maryland it's therefore not going to cost a whole lot to replace it so that's the plus side but now let's go ahead and take a look at the gauges upon startup you got your tachometer all the way to your left speedometer is on your right and there is a small digital display front and center to control what is on that digital display simply use the steering wheel mounted controls found on the right side of the steering wheel it's going to give you things like your average miles per gallon at any given time how many miles you have left until you hit empty and it looks like we're just about at a full tank and you have 382 miles until you hit empty so that's definitely a decent range and also you can display a digital speedometer really the list goes on got everything up there you could possibly need then touching on overall interior quality power moonroof is going to come standard on the limited and trd pro and then optional on the trd off-road premium overhead sunglass holder coming standard dual zoom climate control with the limited and trd pro home link controls for the premium trim levels and up by the way those home link controls are not actually found on the rear view mirror but rather on the ceiling kind of just behind the uh the interior lighting here so that's up to three different garage doors if you were curious about that wood trim detail specific to the limited i like that because it's a a brown wood that kind of matches with our brown perforated leather seat so i was a big fan of that just in front of the shifter you do have a cup holder a little bit of storage to the right of the shifter you have some more storage yet another cup holder and like i was saying to you guys right behind the shifter you have that button to open and close that power rear window which is pretty nice and within the center armrest you have an absolute ton of space along with a 12 volt power outlet and on the back side of that center armrest you actually have a little place for tissues so the picture shows at least that is where you can only put tissues nothing else is allowed so that is where you're going to be able to find that but overall interior quality is very nice here in our limited without a doubt but now let's go ahead and take a look at the infotainment screen there is an eight inch color touchscreen display comes standard with bluetooth and audio streaming android auto apple carplay factory navigation system is going to come on the sr5 premium trim level and up you can also check out your weather information up there if you wanted to and of course your radio information and so when it comes to the sound systems in the forerunner you will get eight speakers 
If you were to go with the SR5 trims, the Trail Edition or the TRD Off-Road, then there's gonna be a 15 speaker JBL sound system with a massive subwoofer in the cargo area. I'll show that to you guys again right now because that was the first thing I noticed when I was back there. And that of course is one we have today because we have the limited. So having said that, let's go ahead and turn on the radio. Let's listen to some Christmas music today and uh, let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> The clarity was 100% on point zero bass in that song. Can't comment on that. I'm sure it would be amazing. I think I actually tested the limited last year as well, and it was amazing. But anyways, clarity was 100% on point with that. But last thing I want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the Forerunner in reverse, of course, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board with a couple different angles. Then you have the 360 degree monitor, which is going to be available then as well, which is always it's going to lead us in this safety. And so to start front side, side curtain airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags then as well. In the back, you're going to have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also Toyota safety sense. That's going to come standard on all trim levels. What that includes is a pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, lane departure alert, automatic high beams, and dynamic radar cruise control then as well. And in addition to that, limited trim that we have today is going to add front and rear parking sensors then as well. But overall, when it comes to my final thoughts, this truly can be an off-road beast if you spec it out that way. And a lot of people do spec it that way, which has kind of made this car a legend. And when you add to that the legendary reliability, it's unstoppable really at that point. You get tons of cargo space in this thing. I, I think I would personally get the new TRD Sport because you do get the hood scoop which i think looks stinking cool you also get the x-ray suspension or the adaptive suspension that we have in the limited and for me i think that would be the best combination just for me personally at least and it may differ for you but as far as room for improvement goes of course the fuel economy could be better but it's kind of what you expect in a vehicle like this to be honest and it's somewhat basic interior quality if you don't go with the limited trim level at least i'll put it that way but that about rounds out this review, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I'll see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.